Well, well, also some of the like the the lineup today was also it maybe it's very possible Ancelotti would have rotated ev- anyway if everyone was healthy. But also a lot of this was down to necessity, right? Benzema mm-hmm. was not available, Modric was not available, and Fede Valverde was not available. Um, this team on paper, the starting eleven, is good enough to beat Leipzig. But I also want to pay my respects to Leipzig, who were better on the night. There's no question. I thought I was really impressed with it in Kunku. I thought he was awesome tonight. We can talk about that. Um, I'm I'm a firm believer that this game means nothing for the the rest of the season because these group stage games and these bad group stage performances have almost never been an indicator of where this team will end up in the spring. Never. Um, Having said that, I also think it's naive to just scrap it up and say, nothing wrong here, nothing to see here. It's okay. It's our first law in 170 days or whatever. We'll be fine. Um, When Ancelotti says we can learn from this game, what does that mean? Like in terms of what are the learning points from this game, what are they to you? What would you take away as things you learn from? I mean, don't play Rudiger as a left back. Um, Maybe not at all, you know. It happened in pre-season. It's happened a couple of times when he's come on. I think at this point, it just has to be something that is a nice option in case of emergency. Basically, if Mondi, Alaba are out injured, the two of them, you have that option. Cool. Apart from that, it really shouldn't be. For two reasons. Because Rudiger at left back, just it's not the same. He had really struggled, especially down um, um, with so many of, of Leipzig's attacks coming down his side in the first half. But then also, Rudiger is so good at centre-back that you really lose out there. And I think part of the uh, struggles in the first half where Nacho didn't play particularly well at centre-back, he did a bit better um, once he moved over. But um, if Rudiger had been where Nacho was to start the game, um, maybe not necessarily that you don't concede those goals because there were mistakes involving other players, but... Um, I think the whole defence would have looked more solid and Courtois wouldn't have been maybe quite as as worried. So that's one lesson, I'd say. And the other one was maybe Camavinga's position. Um, I think that's a, that's a lesson, <laughs> another one not to do. And this, this comes two weeks after Ancelotti <clears throat> said, look, last classical, I invented some stuff. I put Modric as a false nine. I'm not going to invent positions for players anymore. But he's done that in this game with, with Rudiger. Uh, at left back and Camavinga playing really far forward, almost as a number 10. Um, it just mm, didn't really work um, and it's not his position and he struggles enough, Camavinga, when he starts a game um, in a position he knows, never mind when he's asked to do something he's uh, never done before in a Real Madrid shirt. Well, the, it's funny because the two things that this game had in common, the thing that this game and the Classico had in common the, in terms of experiments, experimenting Modric with the false nine in that game last season and doing some experiments in this game is that, to be fair, they're both games that, you know, yeah. things are quote-unquote done and dusted. They're not like season-on-the-line type things. And to Angelo's credit, at least if you're going to experiment, it's in games like this you want to do yeah. it in theory and not like when, it, when the season on, is on the line. So I'll give them that. Um, the Rudiger at left back thing is a weird thing that I'm already shocked and perplexed at how much he's played left back or right back this season. I get it that if there's anyone who can reinvent somebody on the field, it's Carlo Ancelotti. He's done it so many times with so many different players in his coaching career. I almost think that he could probably reinvent me into a chef if he wanted to. Like he has that ability. Like I, if there's anyone who can reinvent me into like a, a farmer or a chef, it's him. But uh, Rudiger at left back, like the thing with him is that I could trust him to do some really good defending on wingers in that situation. You know, if a, if a, if a star winger is running at you one-on-one, I trust Rudiger to defend that. But as Ancelotti himself put it in the post game, that, you know, Nacho's a little bit more accustomed to pressing up high on the left wing and getting involved a little bit more in attack. And Rudiger just is, that's not in his skill set. In his skill set offensively, as I wrote about last week, is that <clears throat> he's a really great long-range passer. He's composed with the ball at his feet from deep, from central channels or just in that left half space. As a left winger, I mean, left fullback, he, that's not that's not his game. It's funny because I, I still go back to what Courtois said after the game in terms of, you know, I saw this coming right from the beginning. This was, you, can, you could just tell that this was not our night because our heads were not in it. Because I, f- I felt like a lot of even some of the individual success that 
that happen in this game, whether it like Kamavinga struggling at first, but eventually growing into it in his own way, trying to break lines, trying to be, you know, get out of certain situations with his dribbling, whether it was Rodrigo trying to take initiative on and break lines, whether it was Asensio's moment of brilliance when he made space for himself, crossed it to, a, to Vinicius for the goal right before halftime. Moments like that, Rudiger stepping up in key moments defensively. A lot of it felt like it was just on-the-fly players trying to figure out what's happening, and it was a little bit too chaotic. And it was a little bit more... It was the classic Real Madrid defensive chaos game in the Champions League that we've seen so many times over the last 20-odd so years. It, it's it's kind of prevalent, but it was a lot of on-the-fly individuals having to figure certain things out. And I think tactically the structure was a little bit disjointed. We tried to press at certain points and it, the, the pressing was terrible. And I think you can nitpick everyone's performance in this game, too many included. He also, too many, if it wasn't for too many intervening several times during the game after our press broke down, we could have conceded more. And so the press was just terrible. It was all over the place. There was no cohesion. This is one of the most underrated things that Benzema brings among many things that Benzema brings, is that the press is a little bit better with him in the lineup because he has that ability to organize the team. It looked really disjointed today. Um, and the other thing I will say is that obviously you miss Benzema. Today you really mess, missed him in the sense that he's so good at just dragging players around and creating space for other people that you kind of just miss that today. When when Rodrigo was trying to dribble in the box or Vinicius was trying to dribble, there was no space to do that. And it was a little bit too congested. None of the crossers had a target in the box to hit. So there was just a bit of everything, a mishmash of problems that I think um, players were just trying to figure out what's happening on the fly. And it just and, and Leipzig had way too much intensity and talent. Um, it was just too late by the time you kind of figured some things out, I think. No, absolutely. It's, you know, from a tactical point of view, you put it, it's, it was disjointed, it was sloppy, it was generally porous. And then it also comes down to a couple of um specific moments the first two goals come from some poor individual defending some unfortunate bounces and then you're down so you know just not Real Madrid just not at it Leipzig we have to remember as well this was for them absolutely a must-win game go into it they're just playing with a different intensity and I think that's the other thing too I think I lean more to what Courtois said than what Ancelotti said about was it a lack of intensity was it too relaxed I think it was a little bit, not just that tactically there were some problems. This lineup had never played together before, not just these kind of things, but just some of the individual players. And Vinicius, towards the end, his last hour was actually really good, but the first half hour, he did really nothing. He didn't take anyone on. He passed every pass back. He just looked like he was just walking around the pitch, not really that interested. And of course, he's he's... And I wrote about this as well. He should have been rested in this game. Vinicius should not have played this game. This is a game when Vinicius should be rested. He's played more minutes than any other player at Real Madrid this season. This is a game where if anyone needs, or as I put it in the in the piece, deserves a rest too. Never mind whether he is tired or not. He also deserves a break too. Um, it's this game. And by putting Vinicius out there instead of someone else who could have come in, you have a player who really kind of looked in that first half hour like he didn't want to be there. I think maybe at some point he maybe got a talking to from somebody like, let's go, come on, we're 2-0 down. But if you're going to have 70% of Vinicius because he's looking after himself, World Cup's coming up, this whole debate of our players, you know, really going to put themselves through tackles like they would normally. If you have 70% of Vinicius, wouldn't you rather have 100% of one of the backups who's not played at all um, this season, especially in a game like this when, uh, you know, it doesn't really matter the end result. But at the end, you've, lo- you've got defeat and Vinicius is, is even more exhausted um, for, for the next one. 